that's the level of effort you should do before you stop. And I'm in this day and age when you have opt out and people can just instantly put your email into a blacklist that you, they don't even get the emails because their system now is blocked. Yeah. Them, right. So you definitely, those that spam and, and I know there's a big, big push on AI automated marketing and all this stuff, lead gen, you know, that really no one is behind it, but AI is just constantly barraging people with all of this stuff. Um, that to me is just flooding the system with garbage. Yeah, I know me, whenever I get a message, either email, link, or whatever, and it's like 20 paragraphs, single space, I don't want to read, I just have to delete it. Like, I, 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 cause I can't read all that mess, right? My eyes don't, I, have, I need like broken down, like double space, or at least paragraphs, right? Two, three sentences, paragraph break, two, three sentences, paragraph break. Just like 10,000 words, like single space. Yeah, I can't, I can't fuck with that. No, no, it, people don't have time. I mean, I think, I think people, salespeople or when you're trying to prospect with a client don't realize that that person, if they're a decision maker for their company, probably gets several hundred emails a day. Yeah. And, and they literally don't have the time to do their job and go through their email by reading every single email all the way through. No. Just it doesn't happen anymore. It, there's no way to do that. So you need to be smart. You know, I, yeah. I have so many, I read the first couple of lines and I'm like, yeah, you don't even know what I do. <laughs> and what kills me, like I'll get an email, it'll be like, hi, Jason, we do this, this, and this, or something, something, something. It'll be like, John Brown. No company, no nothing like, like, I, I don't know what the fuck you do. There's no social proof. Yeah. Like, are you on LinkedIn? Like, what, you know, that's like block and spam. Yeah. <laughs> that's what that is. Yeah. That's like, yeah, I'm not, you know, you shouldn't hide who you're with. You should be pretty transparent. Yeah. You should be like, I understand your time's busy. I'm going to be respectful yeah. of your time. And I only ask literally for like a five or just a few minute conversation. Yeah. That I can, you know, if they're going to take five minutes out of their day to set up a quick virtual meeting yeah. and just real quick, what's important to you? Yeah. Here's, here's what I'm about. I'm here to help and support you. Is there anything in the next 12 months? And that's the other thing is, is I put my time horizon out over the budget year for the next two years, right? If we're already into this year, this year's budget may already be set. And there's nothing new is going to happen this year. It's yeah. all about what's happening next year. So, okay, when do you review your budget? Yeah. So I always say, you know, before that budget is set, for either this year or next year, can we get five, 10 minutes? Yeah, like build a relationship, so to speak. Just five or 10 minutes. And, and you know what? In that meeting, I stick to that five or 10 minutes. Yeah. Even if the call's going well and, he, it, like, it, they keep wanting to ask questions and talk, I'm like, hey, Promise you, I just wanted five or 10 minutes. It does sound like there's some interest here. It does sound like there's some things we could do. Could we, re could we schedule another you know, half hour yeah. and we could pull in some other people maybe and have a more robust conversation? And, and they appreciate that because I'm respecting their time. They're not, you know, I'm not, oh, okay, five minutes and then it turns into an hour and a half. Yeah. And then it's like, what happens is that executive at the end is like, this guy, Trick me into talking, he said five <laughs> even minutes. Though, now, even though it was him. Yeah, and then it's not, yeah, and then it's, if they're not going to move forward, now they're late for their other meeting, and now you've created problems, and, you know, you just have to stick to what you say you're going to do. How often do you use the, the, the phone, so to speak, either, like, actually co-calling someone you don't know or using the phone, like, maybe calling, like, a warm lead? How, how uh, intro goes the phone to your sales process? Because I'm... Because I'm focused, you know, we're here in Seattle, general area, and I'm specific focus on like the West Coast for the most part. Uh, but anywhere in the U.S., I would I would call as part of, you know, I would I would shoot an email, connect with LinkedIn, do some research, understand about the company, maybe email two or three or four people that would be in management leadership, and connect with them on LinkedIn or social media. And, and then I would follow up with a phone call, but I'd space it out after a few days because chances are they've read it. They didn't need anything, 
but I can reference that in my phone call. Like, hey, I've sent you an email. I connect with you on LinkedIn. I'll just see if I can get a couple minutes of your time and see if we can put something on the calendar sometime this year. Doesn't have to be right now. And when there's no sense of urgency in your voice and like, oh, can we meet, you know, tomorrow at two o'clock or Thursday at four, you know, give them a choice. Well, if it's in this a week and they're busy for the next month, the answer is going to be no. And that's yeah. it. And now you've lost your opportunity. Yeah, that goes me to, we all got emails from someone. Hey, hey, Jason, great thing you're doing with Kevin's HR. We, you know, blah, blah, blah. Here's two times to meet tomorrow. Tomorrow? Are you fucking kidding me right now? Yeah. Have you lost your fucking mind tomorrow? 